Welcome to the town board meeting, Thursday, July 18th. Please rise and salute the flag. Emergency exits are to my right behind the town attorney and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Councilwoman Samoji? Here. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Gutierrez? Here. Councilwoman Doyle? Here. And Supervisor Perotti? Here. Public comment? Yes. Uh, my name is Linda Peelis. Several months ago, I left a letter, a copy of a letter uh, I sent to the State Highway Department concerning signage on the hamlet of Amenia on the west side because I'm concerned about the number of children that are in the area, that are walking to the playing field, that are crossing because on the, as this shows, On this side, on the north side, the sidewalk stops here. There are several houses, and my house here is grass. What I've noticed is that the traffic does not slow down. I asked the um, engineers over there if they would put up caution children at play signs. They said that um, in the letter I received yesterday, they said that they don't do that kind of side signage that it's a residential area and that people should just know better to um, slow down to the 35 mile an hour. I also suggested that a crosswalk be put down below my house that crosses over to the sidewalk because there's plenty of children here at my neighbor's house. This is my house. There's a house. My neighbor has plenty of children. She's unhappy that there's no sidewalk here anymore. Um, it's my fault. They called me and asked me if it would be all right if they take out the sidewalk. And I wasn't thinking of the consequences of the children at the time. And so I said, yes, now it's a problem. So. To cross right here, you're allowed to cross a 44, according to the engineer, anywhere along this road. The reason I've made this sign is because there's a lack of visibility. This is a hill, and this is a slight turn. So when the young lady tries to pull the carriage across, or push it across, at this area, she can't see right here who's coming around the corner. So my request to you is to put in whatever form you call it a proposal or whatever to send to the state to do a study so that there's a possibility that we can get a crosswalk here. So that's pretty much why I'm here. I mean the other part it's my fault is I should have said no please, you know fix the fix the sidewalk on my side. I didn't realize. So the problem, problem there, there was a sidewalk to nowhere. It's a sidewalk that would go to, well, there's a business down here, and there's the playing fields on this side. But it's getting from this side to this side. That's the problem, unless they're crossing up at the light for the children. And it's dangerous. It's, I mean, people do not do 35, OK? Um, I in my own initiative, put up a yellow and black sign that looks rather official saying, caution, chickens at play. If you go past my house, you will see it there. And it has helped, I would say, 5% of the, the time. So I am humbly asking you, council, to submit a proposal or whatever the legality term for it is 
to present to the assistant engineer for them to do a study for a crosswalk in that area rather than putting in a sidewalk. For me, kids should be walking on the dirt, but you know, it's okay. But the, but the crosswalk, and I have to accept that they're not going to put signage up. They're not. So it's a residential area. So, so that's, any questions? No, we can, I can send a letter. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Supervisor's report, Mosaic Trail to the Train update, there's no change in status. Town of Amenia Highway Garage update, researching types of highway garages and salt sheds. Noise law update, sent town board public <coughs> comments and recommendations. Dutchess County procurement shared services, the RFPs are in process. Regional ambulance grant, questions from each town regarding NDP proposal combined and being sent as one document to NDP, meeting date with NDP to be determined. Grant update, Mike Haggerty, grant writer, requested letters of support for CFA grants from Senator Serino, Representative Delgado, Assemblyperson Barrett, and HVA all have responded that they will be providing letters for the Town of Amenia's grant applications. Town Clerk report. Good evening, the minutes of July 11th have been circulated to the board. Has the board had the opportunity to review them? Yes. 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 Discussed. <laughs> Motion to accept the July 11th, 2019 minutes with the correction of uh, a motion by Doyle. Um, What's the third page? On page three. You left your name out. I'm Number sorry. 40. Second. Jim. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Also this time I present to the board with regret Nancy Luther's resignation effective July 15th and that would be for the positions of Deputy Town Clerk and Deputy Register of Vital Statistics. I motion that, make a motion that we accept with regret Nancy Luther's resignation. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And would you like uh, to advertise at this time? Just think. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what? Why don't I get the approval to do it, and then when I'm ready. Yes, yeah, seeking approval to make okay. a motion to authorize the town clerk to authorize for the vacant positions in the town clerk's office. Okay. Second. And Second. Second. Third. Fourth. <laughs> We need little, in those little bags and those little things that like get the game show. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> I know I should look up. Also at this time I'm presenting, um, Kathleen Howard sent an email asking for the approval of the board to go ahead and appoint Chris Kligner to fill the open position of um, summer camp off-site medical director. He will be inspecting and doing all of, going all over the camp medical forms of physicals immunizations on call for questions asked by camp staff, health department fill out all the medical forms for the health department if there is any emergencies or um, an outbreak at camp, pay to be $20 an hour. And this is in replace of the on-site EMT that we used to have. I would so move. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, this evening I circulated uh, information from Mike Segelgen regarding air conditioners. Uh, we are presenting air conditioner quotes for the rooms that were um, recently installed with the new windows. Actually, they're HVAC. It, yeah, it is. They do have heat. <laughs> uh, Mike came back. There were a total of seven quotes, four of which presented um, numbers. Others were unable to or not interested with the low bid of Protean Sons for the town board meeting room in the amount of $4,930.
Other bids for the town board meeting room came from Fox Air in the amount of 5,900, Petro 5,748, and MT Kessler. Kessler in the amount of $5,690. Also presenting this evening for the building and assessors rooms, it's a two-headed unit for $7,902 from Perodian Sons. Fox Air was in the amount of $8,400. And then Petro and MT Hessler's um, are no return calls. We also contacted American H&P and they said that they would not bid at this time since they were the high bid last time. He also called Taylor, who didn't want to spend the time as if we are looking for a state bid, and he also called Haviland, and there was no call back. So tonight, Mike, we would like to make the recommendation to the board to go ahead and utilize Perodian Sons for the installation of HVAC units for the town board meeting room and the building and assessor's room. Okay, I, I second that. I need a first first. I oh, can't first. make motions. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just, uh, I'll second it so we can discuss. Michelle. Yes. Yes. And Doyle. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Uh, these are window units, are they? No. 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 no what are they? HVAC. HVAC. Sleeve? Mini splits. Central air. The Mitsubishi it's mini. It's not central air. Yeah, they're so. mini splits. So they're like the ones that are in the courtroom now. Okay. Like yeah. Condensers yeah. outside, and then there's like a unit on the wall okay okay and they're super quiet you were in my office did you hear it they're super quiet yeah so I, are they energy efficient is that absolutely. why we're doing the hvac that and we're also doing it because the new windows if we put air conditioning units in it we'd have to drill holes in the new windows but these are more energy efficient yes because in addition to um, air conditioning also has a heat pump so if you know if it's Kind of chilly outside. We, you know, we it would delay us having to put the oil on, and we would be okay. able to just use the heat pumps. Okay. And do we have the money in the budget for this expenditure? Yes. Okay. So we. Any, been, good. Do we? What I did we do? Do we? Do we? So move, do we move first and second? Or you yeah. move first and second. Now I just have to say all in favor. But I just want to make sure there's no more further discussion. Oh. That's why I'm looking up. Well, <laughs> it, since it's a since it's a bid, you I'm should do, do individual. Role. Yeah. Oh, we have to do each one. No, no, no. no I'm she gonna, will. I'm going to say your name, and you're going to say yes or no. Oh, okay. A or nay. Councilwoman Samoji. Uh, yes. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> To the both of them. Council <laughs> Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. yes. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Supervisor Perotti. Yes. <laughs> also, last week I presented to the board um, the request from the Wasake Project for the closure of the road. I did receive the certificate and notice to close uh, the road from the highway department, signed off by Megan. And in our packets tonight, there's a resolution. Number. It's going to be 42. Wasaic Project's Community Day celebration. Whereas the Wasaic Project is having a community day on August 3rd, 2019. Whereas the Wasaic Project has requested that the town board grant authority to close Furnace Bank Road to all traffic except for residents of Furnace Bank Road from 11.30 a.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. And whereas the town board of the town of Amenia has the authority to close highways in the town of Amenia to allow for public assembly pursuant to vehicle traffic law number 16606. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby grants authority to close Furnace Bank Road to all traffic except for residents of Furnace Bank Road from 11.30 a.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall become effective immediately. Can I make that motion? Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Smoji? Yes. So, Did I say yes? What was that number? 43? I didn't get a copy of that. Just to... It's in other matters. 40. It's in other matters. What did you say this number was? 42? 42. Yes, 42. Thank you. You're welcome. Also this evening, I'm presenting the vouchers for the abstract dated July 16th, consisting of eight pages. The amounts are as follows. General Fund A, 
$140,935.24. Highway Fund, $100,305.27. Amenia Lighting, $1,311.69. Wasik Lighting, $480.12. Amenia Water, $9,192.16. The ban, $12,196.35. Kent Hollow Mine Escrow, $31,331.67. For total monthly bills being uh, $295,752.50. And I present those to you this evening. Okay, uh, I make a motion that we shall do. Payment of these bills. Second. Discussion. Okay. Uh, there's a secure A and R security charge on here for a thousand seventy-two. Mm -hmm. We had a charge from them uh, last month for a panic button, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm this one is for. Um, we've been having a lot of problems with um, the phone line that the fire, our fire alarm goes to. So their recommendation was to change it to cellular, because I guess that's that's what most of the towns do now. So we don't have to worry about the phone line going down, and and the so that the uh, alarm will be active. Is this a one-time expense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's for the um, fire alarm and the burglary alarm. So we're not dependent on the phone lines going down. Okay, just we had, it was like a $1,000 charge last month too. I just uh, am hoping it's not a $1,000 a month in new, <laughs> new work every month. No, but it's the very first bill in the general folder. Okay. It just was, um, was a better thing to do because there, we have had chronic problems with the phone lines. Sounds good. Okay. Councilman Smoji? Uh, yes, sorry. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Purdy? <clears throat> yes. Um, also this evening, uh, I'm going to be presenting a request from Daniel Donnelly. He is the Vice Chair of the Culture Advocacy and Committee Chair um, for the Dutchess County Libertarian Party. He lives here in Amenia, and he came in and he asked if he can organize a blood drive the New York Blood Center gave him the town's information since this is where we host our February blood drive. So he's looking to host a blood drive on October 2nd. He said from 10 to 2, which would really mean he needs the building from like 9 to 3. We're already here. Um, I showed him the space that we currently use mm -hmm. and um, they're, they're trying to aim to get approximately 50 attendees um, to pledge for donations. And at this time, I'm just um, seeking the approval to go ahead and waive the $50 building use fee. But they, their organization does have the insurance requirement. That's okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. So, I, Michelle. Uh, yes, I make. Is that a motion? Do I make a motion now and say please accept that? Uh, and waive the fee. And waive mm -hmm. the fee and let the people come on in here and and do a blood drive. After Great. all, it's, it's it's a necessary uh, thing. We need a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I also announce that the town clerk's office will be closed for training next Tuesday, July 23rd from t uh, 12 to 1, I believe is how long the class is. And then uh, on Wednesday, July 31st, it'll be closed all day for class in Albany. And I share with you a community event, Congressman Delgado will be coming here to the Amenia Town Hall this Saturday mm -hmm. from 5 to 6 p.m. And that'll conclude the Town Clerk's report for this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Highway report. We have completed our paving project with a shared service paver, resurfacing Sheffield Road and Prospect Avenue. 
We received the CHIPS winter recovery money for 2019-2020 budget and the amount of $14,095.63. This money was used toward the paving project. Today we are out mowing dirt roads and chip, chipping brush on Depot Hill Road. Uh, Recreation Commission report. We have the minutes from the Recreation Commission. There, um, Beekman Park, now the baseball is done. We need to work on some upkeep at the pavilion, the kitchen. They came up with a to-do list, including a major clean of the kitchen, along with installed some, installed some cabinets, painting, and installed a new door with locks. Supervisor Perotti approved it, and we will be getting the needed work shortly. That money is in their budget line, by the way. Came to our attention the park was not being cleaned, in Wasaic Park, that the park was not being cleaned up properly. Upon investigating this, Supervisor Perotti will incorporate the weed whacking as part of the contract for next year. In the meantime, Sean Howard will be handling the upkeep. Uh, Townwide tax sale, the commission agreed on a date for this as October 30, 2019 from 93. Scott will be in touch with Supervisor Perotti and Town Liaison Michelle Smadji to finalize the details. Ideas for new recreation programs events. A discussion about new programs such as concert at the hall, dinner dance, and a movie night was had. Scott will talk with Supervisor Prody about these possibilities. Maplebrook School is offering town residents an adult swim time on Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30. Are there any other committee reports? CAC uh, will meet next month. They were uh, canceled their meeting on uh, yesterday. So it's the third Wednesdays at seven o'clock here in this town board meeting room. Um, the only thing I have- Did you have anything else? No. no. Okay. okay. Any, uh, on behalf of the uh, Mena Seniors, our Amenia Senior Picnic is coming up very quickly. It will be Saturday, July 27th at the Wasaic Firehouse. The meal will be served at noon. If you think you call me but you don't remember, call me again. Just leave a message. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, the Lake George trip is technically sold out. So those of you that have a few, uh, you're on the list. When you're uh, just, I'm just waiting for your checks. There's only a few of you, and I know they'll be coming soon. And uh, oh, I just wanted to say uh, one thing. Uh, oh, almost a month ago now, the South Amenia Presbyterian Church invited uh, Supervisor Perotti to come down and and speak for the the bells. They installed those bells in the in the uh, South Amenia Presbyterian Church chimes and they rang and everything and uh, Victoria gave us a little a historical update about the church even the people of the church were quite surprised about the history of the church and she cut the ribbon for the bell ringing and they gave us a nice little lunch so it was very nice uh, so I, I just wanted to mention that because you know Victoria is out all the time you know all the time all the time you're there and everywhere uh, Oh, the program at the library, the, the, the library program uh, here in the town hall, I think this is the first year with the library program here. And I was there today, I went there today to see the Animal Ambassador Bringing Life to Education. Uh, and it was absolutely great. I uh, she had all these cute little uh, insects and bugs and animals that, that aren't really native to here in Amenia, but very nice, it was very well done. And uh, you may bring your children to this these events. They're on the Thursday, on every Thursday. Next one's the 25th and the first August 1st and August 8th. Even if even if you don't come to the uh, the summer camp, you may still come and bring your your child or your grandchild or what have you to any of these things. Next week is the Star Lab Planetarium. So I think that'll be a fun thing to see. What time is that? Michelle? It's 11 a.m. and it's held in the auditorium, and it's really and they had it. The auditorium was literally filled uh, in there today when I went there, and I, I really I was very impressed by it. I liked it so very much, and I think uh, I think it's wonderful that the town of Amenia and the uh, 
I mean, your library are in, are in uh, cooperation to have to put this program on in the summer since we're doing the summer camp and stuff. And, you know, maybe it can go on through the season. We don't know. But it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So please come down and, and see that. And I don't have any other news for you folks. That's all I got. Okay, any other committee reports? No? Okay. Resolution to transfer funds, resolution 43? 43. Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary unanticipated to amend the budget. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 13104.01.040, director of finance CE account support by $1,500 and decreasing expense line 19004.01.049. Special item CE contingency by $1,500 for enhanced enhance accounting software support and RBT capital asset and water district information. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 97107.01.105 interest on debt service capital notes by $2,010.50 by $2, and decreasing expense line 19004.01.049 Special item CE contingency by $2,010.50 for administrative fees to M&T Bank for Old Amenia, Old Amenia Landfill note. Whereas budget amendment and the general fund increasing expense line 802.04.01 planning CE special land use attorney by $20,000 and decreasing expense line 19004.01.049 special item CE contingencies by $20,000 for unanticipated legal expenses. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 14204.01 attorney CE by $2,481.98 and decreasing expense line 19004.01.049 special item CE contingencies by $2,481.98 for unanticipated legal expenses. Whereas budget amendment, the general fund increasing expense line 14204.01 attorney CE by $6,000 and decreasing expense line 63102.01 community action kitchen by $1,000 and decreasing expense line 16204.01.059 building CE by $5,000 for unanticipated legal expenses. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 90508.01 unemployment insurance by $1,007.52 and decreasing expense line 19004.01.049 special item CE contingencies by $1,007.52 to pay unemployment claims. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line Zoning CE conferences by $321.78 and decreasing 802.204.01.028. Planning CE conferences by $321.78 for stenographer costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 13554.01.044 assessor CE to tertiaries by $10,000 and decreasing expense line 16204.01.059 building CE heat by $10,000 for unanticipated legal expenses. Whereas uh, budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 16204.01062 building CE maintenance by $14,000 and decreasing Expense line 14404.01 engineers by $14,000 for generator installation electrical con contractor expense. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Amenia authorizes a transfer and necessary budget lines to process the transactions. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall become effective immediately. And I make that motion. Second. Discussion. Okay. Um, two things. The this first one is just my uh, ignorance on the situation, but the old Amenia landfill note, uh, I had always assumed that the town of Sharon and... Uh, They're responsible for the maintenance costs. Okay. But 
we have to pay for our share of the cleanup. There was a um, there was a note through M and T Bank. Um, DEC paid seventy five percent of the cost. Our share of paying for the cleanup was twenty five percent. Okay, so Sharon didn't pay for any of the cleanup. They no. just pay for the maintenance. They that pay for the agreement. maintenance for the next 30 years. Okay. And they also have to pay for the testing. <clears throat> so sure. any of the testing required by, of the wells required by DEC, um, there's a, you know, a person has been, a company has been hired to do that. And they have to pay for all testing that is, um, that the DEC requires to be tested, all the chemicals it requires it be tested for. Got it. Okay. Uh, the second thing is more of a comment than a question, but there's a total of four transfers uh, that add up to $38,500 for unanticipated legal expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand we have an escrow to cover, but my general comment would be that I would like to see us try and uh, Try and be a little more diligent in controlling our legal costs for the town uh, in general across the board. Uh, it's it's an astounding percentage of our expenditure, and it would be uh, be wise if we were more judicious about how we spend money on our lawyers. No offense, Ian. Okay. Is there any other discussion? No. Well, that's 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 fine because. Uh, I know the reasons why for these things, so I'm Roll. fine. <laughs> Supervisor Brody? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Terrace? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Smudgy? Yes. Okay, Ian. Silo Ridge Tax Settlement? Um, do you want to. I don't know if anybody had questions on it. Do you want to do an executive session to cover any of the litigation. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of question. Yeah, these have been agreed upon between Silo Ridge and um, our assessor and our attorney. Has anyone seen or reviewed these in advance? I received them in advance. I've gone through these, um, cross-checked every number with Chris's numbers. Um, Cross-check all calculations. Uh, the documents are, are accurate as to what the settlement was that was reached between uh, Silo's attorney and our assessor. Can we get some explanation as to uh, is this in thousands? Yeah, again, I think if we're going to get into some of those issues, it should probably be handled in an executive session. I think we should go into executive session so we have an understanding of what... The uh, assessor is here, so we can go in and speak with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we break on that, do you want to get the solar law discussion out of the way, just so we don't torture sure. the uh, audience with... I guess if you're watching on TV, it's like that, right? So the solar law now, uh, taking the comments that were received, um, brought those back to the committee. The committee uh, had discussed, gone over all those comments. Um, and they made suggestions and changes which we've implemented into this new draft. Uh, in broad strokes, the, the, the comments really dealt with um, aesthetics versus optimal use. A lot of the, the comments were aesthetic. Um, so we did try to uh, soften the language uh, uh, with regards to some of the aesthetic issues, particularly glare and screening, those seem to be the two focus areas. So there was language in there to help reduce uh, some of the restrictions there uh, and make that path easier uh, for the applicants. There was uh, 
considerable comment made about the application process and, and defining that and clarifying that more, and we had to address that as well. Um, and uh, th those are kind of the real big I issues that were, were really addressed. We, there was, uh, oh, the, the solar canopies um, have now been defined and, and regulated and included into the law um, to be regulated in the same form and fashion as a building integrated uh, system, which is, is uh, fairly unrestrictive. So, so that I thought was a plus to, to accommodate many of the comments. Um, uh, solar canopy meaning the solar garage uh, carports? Carport. We Correct. Carports, okay. garage. It would apply also in, to parking lots. You so, cover an area correct. with solar panels. Correct. Okay. Correct. It, uh, the, each is slightly regulated a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, it's regulated based on what the underlying structure would be. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so I thought that was a really good addition uh, to the law as well. Um, uh, some further definitions with regards to what the application process is and what needs to be in the application to make it easier for the planning board. Uh, we did add some more discretionary language for the for the planning board, uh, particularly with some of the aesthetic issues, uh, to help accommodate. So those were uh, all implemented. They have now been laid on the desk. Um, we will have sufficient time between now and the next meeting, uh, and if there's uh, no, no issue. We can put it to a vote next meeting to implement. The people, um, we can still send you comments and. Sorry, say that again. The the comments now would be if there's anything substantial, that would then then we would have to go through the process again, relay it back on the desk. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's minor comments, um, uh, that 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 wouldn't inhibit. So this is the the latest draft and latest and greatest it's for okay for yeah. everyone to review the the emailed version just so the board knows I will email the board again um, uh, an electronic version uh, there was one error in there that I had, I had taken out and fixed um, and so that wouldn't be reflected in your electronic copy but the copy that was laid on your desk before you uh, by me that is the that is the copy. Got it. So uh, we'll review this then. There's probably not, no one had time to get into it too much, but I did see a reference to a use table um, at, included at the end of this chapter. Where is that? Uh, the use table is the same that was as provided uh, before. Use table hasn't changed at all, so the, the, the table of uses hasn't changed. It's I'll email design. that to everybody. I'll email that to you. Okay. Um, it hasn't changed. All right, and we had a little bit of this discussion over email, but uh, I, I know that in the last meeting there was talk about trying to cram this in and get it done before the moratorium expires. I just want to make my point that you know the, I, I I don't necessarily feel like that's a legitimate cause to hurry this through and not get it right. Uh, as Nina aptly pointed out during the last meeting. Um, if there's any, any large project that's not contemplated in the current zoning law, they'd have to come before the town board anyway. Uh, and so I just, it's a bit of a red herring to me. I don't, I'm not, we should, we should feel like we should take the time. And of course, we're working with people who volunteer their time to get this done. Uh, Leo is taking a well-deserved vacation this weekend. So I just wanna, you know, say that I, I personally don't feel like we should feel rushed to do this. I don't this. think we should either. Just get it right. That's, That's fine. All. Fine with me. Well, there there yeah, is a we're... section in there on applicability and how the law would apply as well. For, so um, you may want to look at that as well uh, or just take a special look at that with regards to how the law would apply once it's enacted as well. Uh, I agree. We, sh we, should, we should review everything carefully and be certain of what we're doing. But I, I, I'm just going to say it like this. I don't think we should uh, belabor it too much, you know, because sometimes when you go and you go and you go, it, it just makes it more than we need. When we, we should say when we've reached a certain point, we understand this is the, as far as we all can go with it, with our current knowledge and the current systems that they have with solar and stuff. 
that we should just rest on that. Because sometimes you can just, well, I have a friend who said to me one time, said, Michelle, the trouble with you, Michelle, is you think a thought to death. And by the time you get to that point, it's dead and, you know, you can't do anything with well, it. Well, we have until, the our next meeting is until the first. I, I, so there's plenty of there's time plenty to. There's plenty of time to think, to read to, it, to uh, be. To be to digest it. To, yes. Again, if there's any question, I'm, I'm available. Right. For any questions. Great. I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll review uh, and provide my feedback. Uh, I did want to say just something in general about the process that we embarked on for this particular project. So I felt, honestly, it was a little unfair to our volunteers. So, you know, we asked them to sort of work in a vacuum, and they did a lot of work, and they worked clearly with you and that also cost us a bunch of money and you know then by the time it got to us it was the first time we were all looking at it and uh, you know there was there was a lot of comment to Michelle's point so right, right. maybe in the future we could have a more collaborative process as we go and develop these things so. well can I just mention that those meetings were advertised and I attended many of them those um, zoning uh, review yes. meetings mm -hmm. were were not well attended, but there was a lot of meat and potatoes. Uh, we got draft uh, handouts. All the committee members got examples of other laws, what their job was, and it could have been very collaborative. But it it ended up just being Nina and Leo who were willing to, and Brett. Uh, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Walter Brett. Uh, really stuck with the whole process, drilled down and stayed with all the incredible details, but it's not for lack of being available for oh, collaborative it's no. process. Yeah, I, we I, could have all come I, to I, them it's, and it's, yeah, or it, had it more... You know, it's a, it's a big the project. Minutes were there. It's a big project for the town. This is a big project, no, no doubts about it. And, and maybe just having a, the, the smaller group that you had that were... Uh, well informed about it and interested about it and they could knit and they could pull and they could pick and they could do things would make it more cohesive because sometimes if you have one too many people then, then then something gets belabored you know what I'm saying and they did come and present by and the way did, and they, they did provide minutes yes, they and did. It, it there's no reason why we should have been caught flat-footed because the information was out there they debated each and one of them right. that use table was very s specific they looked at all the different towns I, I don't know how we could have done it better it's hard work it is I, absolutely and tedious I, hard work I, I started by thanking them and yeah. I, I certainly no, I recognize yes, and all by the, thanking them also because yes because they really they put their heart they and soul of money for the town. I don't know what this yes. would have cost us, but I, I, I agree with all that. What I'm specifically reacting to and, and asking is about the the feedback that we had once we got to a draft law. Okay. So I understand right. that a lot of you know a lot of a lot of the work to that went into thinking about it, but right. by the time the draft came to us, it was you know kind of a we provided our feedback yeah. based on that draft, but it was just a lot of work went into that before it got to the draft phase that was presented to us. And oh, so, yes. you know, maybe getting earlier or sooner reviews of drafts would be a, a more helpful aspect. That's all. I, by no means meant to minimize no, the effort that I went think into that. This is a bigger discussion of, you know, we're, we're using them like uh, they're, they're paid employees and they aren't. They're, they're volunteers. And I think the workload of the solar law has been just an example of Yes. The amount of work that they put into this, a um, lot of nights and and work outside of of meetings, just trying to get all this pulled together. But I think that there's other issues. If if we can hire AKRF, are we there or are we still uh, waiting for um, for contracts to you be got the, uh... signed? Yeah, we got information from them. I uh, from insurance on that. I, I sent an email back to them waiting for a response on that. They're still a little back and forth, um, but they are amenable to, to, to what we had discussed. So hopefully we'll have that sooner rather than later. But there's been some back and forth, and we need some additional information from our insurance carrier, which is taking a little bit of time. So which we just, just got a technicality? That. Yeah. Okay, so we just need to get that to them. Yeah, we just need to get the numbers in there. 
Okay. Well, and then, I would, I, then I'll be signing it. Respectfully suggest that um, we bring a KRF into this to lessen. I, I would love to have Nina and ne Leo work full time for us, and and uh, but I I think realistically it would be nice to have a KRF come on board. Give a look at the two big uh, projects that are right now before the Zoning Board of Appeals that are trying to be ironed out um, exactly what accessory use uses are permissible in, in uh, one of the applicants to the ZBA and another one on the details of the thresholds of uh, business uses that are in the Savarese uh, Tim Cole application. Both are before the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. I think this is a pattern that I've seen is that uh, the Zoning Enforcement Officer uh, makes a decision whether or not something should go on to the Planning Board or not. The Planning Board wonders why about that interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they've gotten, he's gotten information, I'm not sure it's being drilled down to the comprehensive plan or of a full use, uh, a full understanding of what the meaning of those laws are because it's meant to be a flexible a lot. It, there's a lot of references that you need to keep drilling down on to really understand what all this means. And I think if AKRF came in, took a look at some of the issues that are dogging our, our process right now, it's costly for applicants, it's costly for the ZBA, it's costly in time and money for the um, planning board, and give us an estimate of what they think might be helpful in making this streamlined for everybody and maybe tightening up some of these, um, the, the, the definition of an accessory use. Is there some thresholds? Are there some information that could make this less difficult for applicants and for the planning board to understand? And, the, and this zoning board, uh, zoning enforcement officer, and there needs to be more details of what the business use in uh, is is appropriate in an RA district. That's all down in the comprehensive plan. It was passed at the same time as our zoning laws, and I think th there's not a deeper understanding that AKR would bring to it. The other thing that I think we need to do, and we've discussed before, is whether Ian or AKRF looks at the escrow law and makes some recommendations for improvements to that. I think we should also look at why um, maybe we are changing our minds but uh, as a town, but why are we still debating solid waste? It's not a, a permissible in Amenia. Why would applicants continue to be encouraged by the zoning enforcement officer to go ahead? It may be grandfathered or maybe it's, a, you know, it's just brush. Solid waste has a very specific definition. Maybe we want to revisit it, but if I don't understand why we keep bringing this up over and over again and applicants get led on and they spend a lot of money on engineering studies. So well, Vicky, I think though, they should... Well, the plan accessory use is something that's been a, def a defined thing for many, many years. And if you take a look at the, the codes of mm -hmm. most municipalities, they all pretty much say the same thing. Some will say it's got to be on the same lot. I mean, it says it doesn't have to be on the same lot. Mm -hmm. But there's all supposed to be subordinate, incidental, and customarily uh, associated with But the you had to write a four-page letter to explain that to the planning board. Um, is I wrote it. Well, I, I, st I sent that to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah. But it seems like that kind of information, it seems standard, right? It is pretty standard. Why are we spending so much time and money to... Frankly, I don't know. Okay. I don't understand. So AKRF needs to take a look at that and say, why are we putting these applicants through these different contortions? Well, it, it could I, be that it's I as simple as you say it's... I think there may have been a misunderstanding from the CEO on, on what an accessory use was or what, how this facility was going to be used. Right. Because they said barn, and he, I think he's... he's thought livestock, not golf. So I would suggest AKRF <laughs> takes a, a clean look at it. They have no axe to grind. They have nothing to do. 
give us a thousand, two thousand dollars worth of work just saying, here's where I think the, the, the problems are, here's a better process going forward. It would save everybody money and time. I'm all in favor of that. I, I think that that should be done. I, I think that Give them a maximum amount, tell us what it would take to fix this or tweak that or leave that one alone. It should have been obvious. He should have simply made a phone call to whatever and settled it. I, I think I think you're right. I agree. The applications for these these things that people are doing, they should be made very simple, so that people can just go in there and. Right. and it shouldn't get past and get past on and, and on to different boards to try and wrestle figure, with these answers. It should be one thing a person can fill it right. out. It can go to the, where it has to go to the first person, and then if. Uh, if they go there and they need additional information, that, that the first person who gets it uh, from, from the uh, taxpayer, so to speak, will be able to say, oh, listen, Mary, you have, this, you have to fill out this section here because I don't understand what you mean by a barn. Yeah, you know? and are there thresholds that say, you know, when you have 2,000 trucks versus five trucks, you know, are there thresholds of yeah. permitted uses in a residential district? Is, it seems to me there's there's a, a missing chink there, but I could be wrong. The issue about the um, whether it's solid waste or not, mm -hmm. I mean, the code enforcement officer actually went to our planning board attorney with that, and it was right. his recommendation to for the people who are buying the property to go to the planning board. So that was Genevieve. They No, it was Dave. They need to understand mm. that grandfathering does not include illegal uses. So it didn't have fact, anything to do with grandfathering. Well, they Nobody's mentioned grandfathering, grandfathering in his response. It could be grandfathered, and that use has been turned down. He seemed to not have understood the history of that property. That's all I'm going to say. Well, um, Mike looked up the history of the property, and there's nothing that can be grandfathered there. Right. In fact, but, in fact there isn't anything. There isn't, response, he there know isn't that. even anything in, well, he sent them all that information. And there isn't anything in the history of the property that even says what it, definitely what it was originally used for. But setting aside the particulars of any yes, one exactly. item, there, I think what Vicki's saying is, A, the code enforcement officer ideally should have clearer, simpler guidelines so that he's empowered to make a decision. He's come before us before with regard to the noise law, saying that he felt unsure of how to enforce certain aspects of our current, mm -hmm. our current code. And so either that's you know fault with our code or uh, a fault with his understanding of it or his training or whatever. I don't know what it is, but I agree with your general sentiment that a lot of those decisions should be made at that level and not involve and lawyers so and vague, volunteers and other boards. Then we need to tweak the law so that it can be less vague in where possible and it still achieve the goals that were set out to. Well, this accessory use issue is costing the landowner a bundle of money and it's also costing the opponent uh, who is. Yeah. President of the Smithfield Valley, a bundle of money too. Yeah, and it really nobody shouldn't. wins. It shouldn't be any like that. It no. shouldn't happen. Yeah. So I, I agree. Anything that can be done that will reduce the cost for everybody, I think, is a good thing. Yes. I make a motion that we, once the contract is finalized, that we hire our planner to look into the current uh, issues before the zoning board of appeals and. Uh, what, what specifically, what issues? So there are two, two uh, applicants currently in front of the ZBA that have to be settled, and that is the Herb Allen applicant about accessory use. They're trying to get a, a, a settle that. So you want them to issue? look at what we have in accessory use because we need to just and the designate the areas we want them to focus and on. And the acceptable resident, uh, thresholds of uh, business use in the RA district as represented by the Savarese Tim Cole applicant. He can look at that as an example of why it seems not to be clear. I would suggest he looks at solid waste and the old Aminia sand and gravel, uh, the former Roxbury. Roxbury. 
uh, issue and give us their recommendations for how to make this simpler for everybody. And the escrow law. I mean, I would throw that in unless you, Ian, you've already started work on that, or is that something um, I, better I've, for? I have looked uh, at that to some degree, and I have some recommendations that I would make for that, but. Um, not by our planner. No, not by the planner. No. Not by the planner. That's not a okay. planner one. So those three issues then. I can. No, there's three because the fourth one is the escrow, and that's not. I can make sure. B Vicky, so take that out of yours. Vicky, the escrow is going to be done by Ian. Would you mind considering it? an amendment to what you just said by just asking them to give us a quote for all that? Yes, first? I was good. Yes, okay. that was part of that was to add a maximum of two thousand dollars, a quote, and an assessment of where we what what we should do and have them focus on. All they're going to do is look at these issues, pick out one, two, or all, and say they need more work. And this is what I suggest we do with this or that. And and this is in the ballpark what it would cost to okay. tweak this or that. I, I do think I mean, we don't really technically have a contract negotiated with them at this point. I, I said think just it, a contract with a planner, our planner, whoever that may be. Well, after I sign the contract, we can get that. But we just we just need uh, what one more insurance piece, right? There's there's some language being dis being negotiated at yeah. this point. So so as soon so as I, we I feel to do a motion to have to engage them for anything at this point. I didn't name them. Okay. If it's just a contract for by our planner, we don't know who that is yet, right? We haven't accepted them. We have. We've accepted them condition. pending, yeah, right, condition on condition. pending the contract yep. language. Okay. So does anybody need me to re-summarize that? So motions and resolutions are not summaries. I just want to, Ian and I actually right. had well, this conversation. Can we, so, do you um, want is this something we can do without, until we, before we sign the contract? Or should we? I would, I would wait till you have a contract signed with your yeah. planner before you start. We can do this on the first. I just think the motion's premature at this yeah. point. It's not, mm -hmm. I, I would wait. So you have a contract in place and then the sooner the better we do it because these issues are being decided on a case by case basis which is never good planning as far as i understand it but if it's better to wait if there's a real a, a bigger danger that we can't work out the details my suggestion would be to wait until you have, have the contract, contract in place yes. okay yeah well, that should be what next week maybe yeah it, it should be yeah short. there's only a couple of Items. Okay. It, it isn't once, something that's going to drag on. Once I receive the response, we were just from, waiting from for information from insurance, insurance company. Yeah. I have one uh, go around with with uh, with AKRF, and and depending on how long their attorneys take to get back to me, uh, or whatever negotiation mm -hmm. they have off off that final okay. edit, then yeah, we're then we're we'll pretty be, close. I mean, we're very close. We're okay. very close. So. Great. Uh, before we break, do you want to do other matters and comments? We can do town board comments if you want to do that. Are there are no other matters. Uh, no, no, the only other matter oh, item oh, was done, the uh, done was closing the road. Your call. No, uh, town board comments. Yeah. No. Uh, the I only had two quick ones. The uh, Wasaic Project Festival is on August 3rd. I mean, we talked about closing the street, but there's actually going to be music and dance and all sorts of uh, fun things. Fun things. <laughs> um, and the last thing was a question, Victoria. The I know the status of the trail has not changed at all. Uh, the ball is with Metro North, as, as I understand it, to... Mm -hmm. And yeah. DOT, yes. Yeah. Actually, I went to a meeting yesterday, I don't know, life is a blur, um, that they had a, um, down at the Dover Town Hall, where they are um, reviewing all the crossings 
railroad crossings in um, Pauling and Dover and Amenia. So I went down for the town of Amenia portion. Um, they made uh, uh, quite a few recommendations for the crossing at Furnace Bank to make it safer with more signage and markings. And so they're gonna be working with myself and Megan to improve the whole area at Furnace Bank at that crossing to make it safer. Okay, I mean, I know that there, that is an but, initiative. Uh, but those were, but some of the signal people were there. <laughs> yeah. So I said, hello, <laughs> what are we doing here? So apparently it's still in their committee or whatever. Okay, so I think it was a, a year or two ago the governor had mandated that uh, MTA embark on this project, a, a study, a, a review of all the at-grade crossings. Um, I know that there is uh, funding behind that initiative. So if there's uh, some conversation over whether you know the town should pay to upgrade the crossing at Wasaic train station, perhaps there's a way to get it to fall under this existing initiative. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I mentioned before, I'm happy to reach out to Metro North if, if you'd like to yeah, draft a letter with me or something. Okay. But I didn't realize there, there were four actual crossings that were look at, the one at the Wasaic station which there was only a couple of things they saw there. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a private one. There's a 10 mile river private crossing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This goes to a field yeah. on yeah. the other side. Yeah, yeah that, that needs some work. So I need to track down who's responsible for um, cutting down the weeds because the site distance is a real problem there. So I have to track down that person. And then uh, what they're doing with um, a lot of the crossings, um, they have, there's a uh, new signage um, they're putting up, do not stop on tracks. So that's going up. There's new stop sign, there's new rail signs. And one of the things they found, mainly because they think, you know, the towns or the county um, really weren't sure what to do, is you know when they're um, when they have the trucks that are drawing the markings on the roads, those markings are going to go are supposed to go straight across the track. In other words, you're just not supposed to stop at the track. Mm. They're supposed to go completely over. So that's something they're working on, and they're also doing um, some pavers. You know, they they have a plan for each cross crossing, but the one that. Um, you know, Megan and I are really going to be spending time with them and working on is Furnace Bank to make it a lot safer than it is now. Because I told them mm -hmm. it's it's not safe the way it is. But they said there should be markings here, there should be signs here, and I said, good. Mm. Now you tell me what, what we need to do and we'll go ahead and do it. But they're going to be working with us. Are we ready to I have a, a go couple into of comments? Yep. Okay. So, um, Amenia Garden Club is offering a special plant sale on Saturday, July 27th, rain or shine. It'll be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Durbridge Garden, 37 Clark Hill Road in Wasaic. Uh, they're going to have local growers and special plants, uh, free admission and discounts for members of the Garden Club. Mm -hmm. And a portion of the sales will benefit the Amenia Garden Club, and there'll be advice from the growers and plants vetted from our growing area. Um, I, I will mention that I happen to be um, offering some free red comets that day. So red comets are pond fish that are uh, orange and sometimes white, orange and white, with a long white tail, like a fan, fan tail. And those are appropriate for ponds. Uh, can be in aquariums, they grow to about 12 inches long if they're in a good pond. Anyway, I had 30 babies, so we're trying to find new homes for them. Uh, ponds are the best. They're um, called red comets because their tail looks like kind of a comet. It's, um, they're very pretty and they dash around a little more lively than other goldfish. 
but they do come from goldfish. Um, I had a chat with Dee Dee Barrett's office um, earlier today on another subject, and they asked me if we had any thoughts about the um, the parking lot that was supposed to be expanded for Metro North at the Wasik train station. I haven't heard anything recently about that. I, I spoke with. Do you with, know if it's happening or? Uh, no, it's I. It's been a long time since I've heard. Yeah, I, I any haven't movement. heard any. I, I spoke with them as well. I just relayed the. The information that I knew, which was that uh, the plan that was originally right. put forth by Metro North for that did include two phases and did include the current parking mm -hmm. footprint and then a more a much expanded, bigger, right. Yeah. And they have the land, they could do it. I think DD's office was concerned that we as the town board would object to an expansion of the Right. parking lot and I I personally couldn't see a reason why right. we would no we need <laughs> more we parking. need more parking right. there uh, brings people into town it's Metro North's MTA's land anyway so they're gonna do whatever they want yeah regardless right. of what we think so but do they have a plan there the original plans for that train station included a second phase of a parking lot on the north side I believe yeah and by yeah, it's the, not going to bother anybody. Yeah, I, I, I told, I told Didi's like the first thing to do would be to check with Laz, who operates the parking lot, and see if they could, um, if they could allow for more long-term permits, because that's another thing that we hear all the time is that, we need you know, it. I can't get a long-term permit in that lot. I have to go somewhere else. I have to go. To, I think Dover is the next parking lot, the closest parking lot where you can actually get long -term. a long-term permit. Does, does the town generate any revenue from this no. parking lot? No. 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 So I mean, businesses in town may get weekend traffic. Uh, you know, people park in that parking lot that live in the Berkshires. You know, like. Yeah, a third of the cars so are Connecticut and Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I, I know and that. That's one of the things we talked about. I told them down there. I said, you know, the reason the parking lot is so full is because you know it's a three-state parking lot, parking yep. lot. And, and and we don't. And they were kind of surprised about that. The people I was talking to, anyway. Right. Uh, but we don't generate. We don't because that, well, that land belonged to the railroad. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, and that's why we don't generate any any revenue from yeah. that. As a matter of fact, we pay an MTA yes. tax. Yeah, that's just kind yeah, of yeah. Yeah, that's special. So. Yeah. We well, they should at least weigh that for us with parking <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, like I said, it brings Don't people into town. For that to uh, people on the weekends use it to park, to get on the rail trail. You know, it's free on the weekends. So yeah. it does get a lot of use, but it's just, it's at capacity. The last thing I would mention is um, the Amenia Garden Club is interested in partnering with the Enhancement Committee from the town to improve uh, and restore some of the plants that didn't make it through a hard winter a couple of years ago um, down in Borden Park. So they're going to help spearhead some of those improvements and help with the upkeep, which is sorely, sorely needed. So I'm going to be working with um, Victoria to look at our budget, see what we can s spare in for um, plantings and um, picnic tables and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's all I have. I, I know our budget's real tight for the yeah. town of Amenia. I know we are really, really tight on a lot of things. and. Uh, you know, so we have to really, uh, we love all of these little things and we love all the big things, we love everything in the town, but we have to really take a close look at a lot of things and prioritize because the budget is really very, very tight for us. The, um, so we have $4,000 yeah, in community yeah. beautification and I know we need a new water pump, so I was subtracting out 250 you know, should be more than enough for a water pump, but... We have a few more things. I'm not talking about additional expenses. I'm talking things that There's we're already There's actual uh, a separate Fountain Square line that budget. we could use for that. For the pump. But that's OK. So that, that leaves even more that so we that can. So that should leave you a little bit enough. more to work. Yeah. But that pump is 10 years old and needs to be. No, they, they have to be replaced. So. Um, are we, we ready? Are we, are we ready? Are we, yes. What, what are we going to do? Are we going to do the, the We need a motion to go into executive session. Do you want to go into executive uh, Make a motion to go into executive session. Second. The town clerk is excused.
We should add to that motion to discuss litigation matters. To discuss litigation matters. And it is, is that the right time or is that the one that we're saying is wrong? 8-12. But we're returning this evening? I, this to a should be quick, right? And then we'll yeah. come back. And it's we'll only notice. a short, yeah, and then we need to do this. Yeah. Depends on the conversation. Right. That happens. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Shall yeah. I make the motion to come out of the executive session? Second. Okay. Now, Damien. Sorry, Michelle. Come on. Um, too. Resolution number 45, I think. We're starting Aye. with 44. 44. Aye. So are you all set, Don? You pick whichever one you're going to read. I'll just follow along. Resolution number 44, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari. Certiorari. Proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Ventures Property A LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo Ridge Ventures Property A LLC regarding various parcels of real property as contained in Exhibit A attached here to seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. Whereas the tax the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves the settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the parcels of real property as contained in Exhibit A attached hereto. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC Lindars Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Is there a motion? I make the motion that we authorize the settlement of the tax Sataria proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Ventures <laughs> property A L L C. Did I say that word right? Certiorari. Certiorari? Yes. A certiorari. I'll second it. Oh Supervisor to... Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Smoji? Yes. I'm going to take a turn. Yes. Mm. Resolution number 45 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Silo Ridge, Silo Ridge Ventures Single Family Property LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo Ridge, Silo Ridge Ventures Single Family Property LLC regarding various prop parcels of real property as contained on Exhibit A attached here to seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved, the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves the settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the parcels of real property as contained on Exhibit A attached here to and be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC Lindars Esquire attorney of the town are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I make that motion. I second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Simonji? Yes. You want to go? Yeah. yeah. Resolution 46 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Condominium 1. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo Ridge Condominium 1 regarding various parcels of real property as contained on Exhibit A attached here to, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amelia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amelia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the parcels of real property as contained on Exhibit A attached here to, and be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC lenders 
Esquire attorneys of the town are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Make a motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Smoji? Yes. Resolution number 47 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari. One interesting word, certiorari. Proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Homeowners Association, Inc. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo Ridge Homeowners Association, Inc regarding three parcels of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-02-7555904 dash 7066-02-822832 and 7066-00-60 9069 seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 219 tax roll and whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceedings now therefore be it resolved that the town of Town Board of the Town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the Town of Amenia of the, of the tax review proceedings for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcels, the following parcels of real property. Okay. 7066-02-755904, assessment year 2019. A original total assessment, 379,000, am I right? Yes. Revised total assessment, 1,000, the amount of reduction, 378,000. Uh, Seems like they've got the columns wrong. The numbers in the last two columns um, should, are reversed, should be reversed. Mm -hmm. The revised total assessment should be 378,000 and the amount of the reduction should be 1,000. Mr. They're not, they're not reducing that. Oh, it doesn't have, oh. They're, they're it doesn't make sense different. to say the revised total. So assessment. switch the it, columns. All of the columns have the and numbers in this particular, transposed. In this one particular one. Yeah. They got transposed. Oh, oh okay. There's, so then I'll just read the other read that one. differently. Do you read that differently for the next one? Okay. Well, no, oh, no. But the reread the. Oh, reread it? Okay. Because it's important that you get the number in the correct okay. column. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'll, she, some of them, they're just back and forth. They're back and forth. They're just next from, two are uh, wrong. So we can correct that. Sure. Just from the parcel number. Parcel, just from the parcel number? Yeah. Okay, so I start with the parcel number. Okay, I just reread it. No, on the resolution that was okay. made. The amounts are correct. We ready? Yep. Okay, okay. I'm going to reread this, there. folks, just so we have it in the right order. Uh, partial 7066-02-755904 for the assessment year of 2019. The original total assessment was $379,000. Amount of reduction no. That's correct. Is one thousand? It's correct as no. is. Really? It's correct as yeah. printed. So the revised total assessment is a thousand dollars. Correct. Wait, what am I saying? We brought okay. it from three seventy nine to a thousand. Okay. Correct. Can we stop reading and then correct. tell me what? <laughs> okay, go to the next correct. parcel no. number seven zero six six zero two eight two two eight three two. And just read it as it's written. And read and just, it as, yes. as it's written. Thank you. Okay, folks, here we go again. This is the second parcel. 7066-02-822832. Assessment year 2019. Original total assessment was $98,600. Revised total assessment is $1,000. Amount of reduction is $97,600. The next parcel is 7067 0060909069, assessment year 2019. 
original total assessment was $58,700. Revised total assessment is $1,000. And the reduction is $57,700, not $58,000. Oh, it's, it, it, that, yes. Because that, I was looking at that saying, how come that's yep, the same? Yeah, $57,700. $57,700, okay? Result. Mm -hmm. And let it be further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and INC Linders, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to eff effectuate the terms of this resolution. Okay. I'll make the motion that That's we it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We're going to help her. We've got to help her. <laughs> Here a second. Yeah, somebody say. I'll second. It. Thank yeah. you, Kim. Don't make me read this thing again. Supervisor Brody. <laughs> yes. Council Woman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Morris. Yes. And Councilman Soldier. Authorizing the settlement of the tax sorciery proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Waterworks Corp. Authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Silo Ridge Waterworks Corp. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo Ridge Waterworks Corp. regarding two parcels of real property identified as tax grids numbers 7066-0266-7811 and 7066-0270-66674. Seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll, and whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for the 2019 as it pertains to the following parcels of real property. 7066-0266-7811, assessment year 2019, original total assessment $4,350,000, revised total assessment $1,000, amount of reduction $4,349,000. 7066-0270-6674, assessment year 2019, original total assessment $4,212,000, revised total assessment $1,000, amount of reduction $4,211,000, and be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian Lenders Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Motion made by, I'll do that, Vicki Doyle, seconded by. I'll second. Michelle. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Samoji? Yes. Resolution number 49 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari, proceeding regarding Stoneleaf Law Venture, LLC. Whereas there is now pending in Dutchess County Sur Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Stoneleaf Lot Venture LLC regarding two parcels of real property identified as tax grid numbers 7066-02-661674 and 7066-02-67. 2902, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. Whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves the settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcels of real property. 7066-02, Day 661 674, assessment year 2019, original total assessment 3,237,000, revised total assessment 3,112,000, amount of reduction 125,000. 
7066-02-672902, assessment year 2019. Original total assessment 2,350 2 million. million. I'm sorry, 2,350,000. Revised total assessment 2,225,000. Amount of reduction 125,000. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian C. Linders, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Make that motion. Second. Resolution number 50. Ooh. Supervisor Pro. Yes. Council. <laughs> yes. Council yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Smoji. Yes. Sorry. It's okay, you're super excited, I know, I get it. <laughs> Resolution number 50 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Sila Ridge LL29 LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Sila Ridge LL29 LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066027887815 seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-02-788715. <clears throat> Assessment year 2019, original total assessment $2,236,000, revised total assessment $2,000,000, amount of reduction $236,000. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian C. Lindars, Esquire, attorney of the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I'll make that motion. Second. Professor Prodi? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilwoman Smoji? Yes. Resolution number 51 of 2019. Authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Stoneleaf mm -hmm. E27 Venture LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court the tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Stoneleaf E27 Venture LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-04-797432, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-04-797432, assessment year 2019. Original total assessment $1,450,000. Revised total assessment $1,325,000. Amount of reduction $125,000 and be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian C. Lindars, Esquire, attorney to the town are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I'll make the motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Uh, excuse me, Councilman Doyle, Councilman Gutierrez? Okay. Yeah. I'll switch to uh, Morris? Yes. And Smoji? Yes. Resolution 50, number 52 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceedings regarding Tapabasca LLC. I don't know if I said their name right. Whereas there is now pending in Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by the Tapabasca LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as grid, tax grid number 7066-04-781415, 
seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll and whereas the tax town excuse me whereas the town assessor has agreed to rec and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceedings for 2019 as it per pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-04-781415, assessment year 2019. Original total assessment was, is that three, three million? Three yes. Million. Whoa, three million. Revised total assessment, uh, one and a half, one, well, one million five hundred thousand dollars, right? Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. Amount of reduction is one million five hundred thousand dollars. And be, be it fur, further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and INC lenders, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effect, effectuate the terms of this resolution. I make that motion. Second. Joe, Supervisor Brody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Smoji? Yes. Resolution 53, authorizing the settlement of the tax tertiary proceeding regarding APT, Apartment Real Estate LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Apartment Real Estate LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066047174487, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby, hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-04717487, assessment year 2019. Original total assessment, 1,275,000. Revised total assessment, 1,150,000. Amount of reduction, 125,000. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC lenders, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, Supervisor Brody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Samoji? Yes. Resolution number 54 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax or shiari proceeding regarding SRCM 10 property LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax or shiari proceeding commenced in 2019 by SRCM-10 Property LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-02-670893, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. Whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-02-670893, assessment year 2019, original total assessment 2,450,000, revised total assessment 2,325,000, 
amount of reduction, 125,000. Resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ann Sealenders, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I make that motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Swaji? Yes. Resolution number 55 of 2019. Authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Celia S. Sutherland. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Celia S. Sutherland regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-02-782702, seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding, now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves the settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. Parcel 7066-02-782702, assessment year 2019. Original total assessment $2,236,000, revised total assessment $2 million, amount of reduction $236,000. Be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian C. Lindars Esquire, attorney of the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Make that motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Terrace? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Samoji? Yes. Resolution number 56 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax search or already proceeding regarding DR Silo LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax search or already proceeding commenced in 2019 by DR Silo LLC regarding a parcel of real property. Identified as tax grid number 7066-02-660653, seeking reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. And whereas the tax assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding now before it, now, now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-02-660653, assessment year 2019, original total assessment $4,914,000, revised total assessment $2,000,000, amount of reduction $2,914,000 and be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and Ian C. Lindars, Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. I'll make the motion. Second. Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Samoji? Yes. Resolution number 57 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of a tax tertiary proceeding, proceeding regarding the Meldeman Family Trust. Whereas there is now a pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax tertiary proceeding commenced in 2019 by the Melman Family Trust regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-04-705468 seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll and whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceedings now, therefore be it resolved that the town of Amenia, that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia and the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-04-7. 05468 assessment year 2019 
Original total assessment, $3,325,000. Revised total assessment, $1,662,500. Amount of reduction, $1,662,500. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC lenders, Esquire, Attorney for the town are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this, this resolution. I'll make the motion. Second. Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Me? Yes. 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 Resolution 58 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax tertiary proceeding regarding DLV SR Investors LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax tertiary proceeding commenced in 2019 by DLV SR Investors LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066 zero two six seven five nine one zero seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll and whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains mm -hmm. to the following parcel of real property 7066026759100 assessment year 2019 original total assessment 2,600,000 Revised total assessment, 2,475,000. Mm -hmm. Amount of reduction, 125,000. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC lenders Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this res resolution. I'll make that motion. Second. Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Sorge? Yes. Resolution 59 of 2019, authorizing the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding regarding Silo LL5 LLC. Whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court a tax certiorari proceeding commenced in 2019 by Silo. LL5 LLC regarding a parcel of real property identified as tax grid number 7066-02-790811 seeking a reduction in the 2019 tax assessment for the 2019 tax roll. Whereas the town assessor has agreed to and recommends a settlement on the tax review proceeding. Now therefore be it resolved that a town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves a settlement on behalf of the Town of Amenia of the tax review proceeding for 2019 as it pertains to the following parcel of real property. 7066-02-790811, assessment year 2019, original total assessment $2,125,000, revised assessment $1,900,000, amount of reduction $225,000. Be it further resolved that the town supervisor, town assessor, and ENC Lindar as Esquire, attorney to the town, are hereby authorized to take all action necessary and appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Is there a motion? I make the motion. Second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Terrace? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. And Councilman Smoji? Yes. And that, that concludes the resolutions for the, the ta Silo Ridge tax settlements. Right. Um, I just have a question. Um, uh, it had nothing to do with this. Not, not this. This is done. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. Uh, the uh, Wasag Fire Company, are they having uh, a, a breakfast this Sunday? Does anybody know? I you have no idea. I have no idea. You'll right? have to call somebody. I have. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't. I didn't see one advertised. Me too. Well, so, 
I was just, I was just inquiring. Inquiring minds want to know. So, is there time any? for the Morris motion? Yes, it is. And what do we adjourn? I second that motion. 918. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No.